Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory, the video series where we talk about random variables, statistics and related stuff. And in today's part 29, we will talk about the so-called Monte Carlo integration. Indeed, this is a famous application of the law of large numbers from the last video. However, as always, before we start explaining the statement, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, by using the link in the description, you can download a lot of additional material for all the videos. Okay, then without further ado, we can start explaining what the so-called Monte Carlo method actually is. Indeed, such a method always uses the law of large numbers, which tells us that we can approximate the expectation with a lot of repetitions of the same random experiment. More precisely, it means if we take n repetitions of the same random experiment, and let's call them x1, x2 and so on, then we can just look at the average, which is given as 1 divided by n times the sum. And now the law of large numbers tells us that this average approximates the expectation of the random experiment. So formally we would write that this converges to the expectation of the random variable capital X. And indeed, mathematically, we have to explain what this convergence actually means. And we have done that in the last video about the weak law of large numbers. Okay, and now the so-called Monte Carlo methods use this fact to approximate this value here on the right hand side. In other words, we have a numerical approximation here by using the randomness. And how this works in practice, we can now see with the numerical integration. In particular, this one is used in higher dimensions, but I will explain it here in the one dimensional case. This means we have the graph of a function and we want to calculate the area between the graph and the x-axis. And in order to keep it simple, let's say that we have the function defined on the unit interval. Hence, we will just integrate from 0 to 1. And you know, this integral is just represented by the area here. Hence, one possibility to calculate that with our random methods would be to throw points randomly into this picture. And then by counting the numbers of points that lie inside the area gives us the ratio of this area to the total area. So this is definitely a valid approach, but it turns out that for the area given by a graph of a function, we have a much simpler method as well. And in the end, you will see that we just have to throw points into the unit interval on the x-axis. And these points can be simply modeled by random variables x1, x2 and so on. However, obviously, they still don't get us the integral we want. But before we discuss how to get that, I first want to explain again the concrete statement of the weak law of large numbers. In fact, this is exactly what we will need for this video here. And maybe to avoid confusion, let's call the random variables here yk. And you know the assumption we need is that all these infinitely many random variables are iid. This simply means that the family of the random variables is independent and they are all identically distributed. And moreover, in addition, the expectation has to exist for all of them as well. However, since they have the same distribution, they definitely also have the same expectation. Okay, so these are the assumptions and now let's use mu to denote the expectation. And now what we get is that the averages we have converge in probability to mu. This means no matter which epsilon we choose here, this probability here goes to zero if n tends to infinity. Okay, so this is the general formulation of the weak law of large numbers and now we see we can use it for calculating an integral if we choose correctly the random variables yk such that this mu here is given by the area. 
Therefore, the general question is now, what is a good choice for the random variables y, k? Indeed, the only thing we have here is an integrable function we can call g. So we have a function g that is defined on the unit interval 0 to 1. And maybe we can also assume it's a bounded function where the bound is given by a number c. Hence we can say it definitely maps into an interval minus c to c. And now what we want to have is the real number given by the definite integral of g over the interval 0 to 1. And indeed we can estimate this integral by picking a random point in the unit interval. Hence we can just say we have the random variable capital X1 which randomly picks a point from the unit interval. And of course if we say randomly here we mean that we have the uniform distribution of the unit interval. Therefore what we get here is a real number we can call lowercase x1. And now we know it lies somewhere here on the x-axis. Hence we also get a corresponding value on the graph of the function. So we also find g of x1 here on the y-axis. And with that we get here a whole rectangle whose area approximates the whole integral. Obviously this is a really rough estimate but still it works here. In other words the random variable g of x1 is what we actually need for the integral calculation here. Therefore we will call this one y1. However as we have already seen the fluctuation in the area here can be really high so what we need to know is what is the expectation of this y1. Only if we know this expectation it will justify the usage of this random variable. Therefore let's calculate the expected value of this rectangle now. This is not a problem for us because y1 is defined with the function g so it's just a change of variables. In fact this important formula we have already discussed in part 14. It tells us that for the continuous case as we have it here the expectation can be written as an integral. And since in this case everything is defined on the unit interval we can also just integrate from 0 to 1 here. And then inside we have the function g times the probability density function of x1. And you know for the uniform distribution this pdf is just a constant function on the unit interval. Hence we just have that this function is equal to 1 here. So in conclusion the expectation is exactly what we want to have. It's equal to the integral of g. So you see repeating this rough estimate as we have it here again and again will give us a good estimation of our expectation in the end if we form the average of course. In other words the procedure here is quite easy. We just take uniformly distributed random variables x and then we just apply the function g to them. And then the average we can form here will approximate the integral. And one way to see that in the picture would be to pull in this factor 1 over n into the sum. Because then the rectangles we draw here will also be smaller. So for example if we consider three random points here, here and there then we are only interested in the corresponding values of the function. And with respect to these values we would take three rectangles where each one has a width of one third. Hence we just have to stretch them into the y direction such that they fit to the corresponding values here. So it's not hard to see at all that this is already a much better approximation than just a single rectangle from before. However please note that in this picture it can definitely happen that the point we considered lies outside of the corresponding rectangle. Okay now in order to finish this video I would say we can also look at a quick example. And there I want to integrate the function given as 4 divided by 1 plus x squared. 
and we want to have it from 0 to 1 as always and you see this is definitely an integral you can solve by hand. However, now we will do it in our studio by using the Monte Carlo integration. And as we have discussed it before, what we need is the uniform distribution given on the unit interval. So this is the right command for us. So let's use that and I would say let's start with a small n first. So let's define a vector x given by the samples as we want them. And moreover, as we have learned before, we want to put them into our function g, which is given as 4 divided by 1 plus x squared here. So this is all we need and now we can run the script to see what we have. So maybe let's take a look at the samples x and the samples y. Indeed, there we see if we divide these numbers by 3, we have the rectangles we have to sum up. However, you already know that r has a function for that, it's simply called mean. So there we have it, this is our first approximation we have for our integral here. And therefore, this is what we want to calculate for much larger n. So let's put print mean into our script. And moreover, let's put in some more zeros for n. And finally, let's run the script to see what we get. And maybe let's do it again and again to get some more estimates. And obviously, we immediately see it's still possible to increase the sample size. And then let's run it again. It's still not a problem, our computer can calculate this one. And indeed, the result again shows that the first three digits we have here are really safe. In fact, I can tell you what we do here is to approximate the value pi. In other words, here with this short script, we have a Monte Carlo simulation of pi. And with that I would say, now you know what the Monte Carlo integration actually is. It's really useful in higher dimensions, where integrals are not so easy to calculate. So thanks for listening and I really hope we meet in the next video again. Have a nice day and bye bye.